It's nice to meet you today. Nice to meet you. I I have been reading your books for as long as I can remember, at least in uh, junior junior high, I guess. Oh, wow. Well, are you one of my people? <laughs> I, I am. I, I haven't read everything, unfortunately, but I've certainly read quite a bit. But at this point, you know, I know you've talked about the end of Shannara. Mm -hmm. For you, I mean, what does that mean? I mean, I, I, I can't imagine working on something so long and... and choosing to end it but obviously no you know it's not it, it is the connotations are sometimes wrong and it's hard to know how to phrase it uh, what I am doing is I'm writing the end of the series chronologically right but not necessarily the end of me ever writing another Shannara book I right. can go back and write in all the large gaps that exist uh, or in the prehistory which is what I will probably do I just didn't want someone else writing the end to my series after putting you know almost 50 years into it uh, that seemed wrong somehow, and uh, so, you know, because life is uncertain, I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead, I've been pointing towards it all these years, mm -hmm. write it, and, be, and get it in place, and then, you know, uh, whatever happens after that happens. And for you, how much emotion is tied to actually finding a way to finish it? Oh, well, a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'm very passionate about what I write, uh, and I'm very invested in it, uh, and as I was saying to a young lady earlier, the process of writing is what matters to me. I, I don't actually have that kind of attraction to a finished book that most most people do. I, once it's done, I, it's done, you know, and it now belongs to readers. And readers are the ones that have to form that attachment. Hmm. But when I'm working on it, you know, it's all mine and I'm the one who makes all the shots, calls all the shots, and who makes all the decisions. And at that point, I'm fully invested in it and hmm. spending a lot of time thinking about it, and I feel very close to it. So hmm. that's the difference, I guess. Do you, have you had an idea for the ending for a long time? Have you been thinking about this since you started? Or when, when do you think that ending came into your mind? Well, it didn't when I started, because when you start writing something like this, you're just trying to get one book done and see if anybody right. will pick it up and read it. Uh, so, and that was true for a long time. I, I, I was sort of on a roll in the 90s when I was writing them at a regular rate of one a year, and they were big, big sprawling epic stories. Um, but uh, I think about 10 years ago, I started thinking about how I wanted to conclude it. Uh, and I began to imagine, you know, I, I kind of knew from the beginning how, what I was going to determine to be the ending uh, and, and what it was going to deal with and how people might react or not uh, in favorably or unfavorably to what I was going to do. Um, and now, when I when I started to write it this time, I knew the last scene, who was in it, mm. and what the last sentence would be. Hmm. I knew that, so I guess that was that was probably when I, I started to pull it all together since I started to write it now. Right. So now, speaking of Defenders of Shinar and, and your new book, when you were putting this together as a penultimate thing, was there certain things you wanted to lay the ground for, or is this just a separate kind of story? Well, it's a little of each. Um, the whole Defenders of Shannara series, starting with High Druid's Blade and Darkling Child and now Sorcerer's Daughter, are uh, of a different sort because it's not a single story or a single plot line told all the way through like right. so much of the rest of my work. Uh, in this case, you've got different stories involving characters who overlap and appear and disappear and reappear from one book to the next. So they should should and can be read by themselves right. without you having read anything else. So that's a little different. Um, I wasn't thinking too much about where it needed to go at the time I was writing it. Uh, I just wanted to get through this. Hmm. But uh, some of the groundwork was laid in, in those books. And in fact, uh, when you start to read these in the first two, really the first two books of the last four, uh, you'll see right away things that harken back to the to this current series right. groundwork that I laid there that I brought forward now. Did you were there any hurdles at all in writing this? Uh, you know, getting through this point because it's a different type of story. No, I don't think it was any different than any other story. Uh, they're all kind of the same in terms of what's required. Right. Uh, there's a certain amount of mystical happening that goes on in the brain uh, when you're putting it together. Uh, you start out with one or two things and then you begin to think about where they might lead and one thing kind of builds on another and you start writing down some ideas. and. You know, I'm, I'm influenced by geography quite a bit, so when I travel, I pull things together and, and stash them away for further use. Um, I wanted these stories to be, uh, in part, love stories, unusual mm -hmm. love stories, not your usual kind. Um, so I worked a little bit on that. 
Um, and, and I wanted to have some kind of a catharsis in the third book. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of things all factored into it when I was working on it. I worked very hard on this current book, this third book. Mm -hmm. uh, it was hard to get it right because it's a very difficult kind of story. Um, so that was a challenge to get it right and I wrote it, you know, so I wrote those parts more than once in order to get them to where I thought they should be. <laughs> Hopefully they're, they're, you know, whether they should be by now, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I haven't had a chance to finish it, but I've been reading along and I, I do love having read a while ago and mm -hmm. now jumping back into it. I love how it feels instantly familiar. Good. Uh, it certainly has evolved from where I last left it, but to see the world kind of again, it does feel like, hey, this is this is this well, is well. You know, a lot of it has place. to do with uh, the fact that it's the same author, right? <laughs> uh, and I, 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 you know, I, I have different influences now and different types of stories mm -hmm. I, I'm telling, and the world has evolved since back when. But uh, I think probably my writing style, although not quite so florid as it used to be, it's mm -hmm. more spare now. I don't use as many words. Um, I think that probably is instantly familiar. I, I know I still use some expressions on a regular brace, uh, basis. So those probably all crop up from time to time. <laughs> Do you, now talking about the show, obviously, I mean, it's been a huge hit. It's done exceedingly well from everything I've seen, certainly, and, and so many people love it and are getting into your world now through this. Mm -hmm. How have you seen that happening as the author? Like, what has that meant to you? Well, it's very gratifying. Obviously, one of the reasons to do something like a TV show or a movie or whatever is to find new readers, right. especially if you're like me, a book person. Um, so I, I was planning on this happening, but you can never know for sure, of course, because you're not sure how the show's going to do. But it did do very well. Uh, just on this past week when I've uh, been at different bookstores doing this promotional work for Sorcerer, I've seen a number of people come through uh, who... Uh, were here as first-time readers because they watched the TV show and got interested. Mm. So that shows that some of that is happening. Um, positioning on the bestseller list, sales all right. indicate to some extent how well you're doing with your efforts to bring new readers into the fold. And you liked it. I mean, I know I've read a bit about. I did. Yeah, how much you enjoyed it. And that's. I mean, that must be extremely gratifying. I'm assuming. Well, it's, yeah, of course. And you know, you're never sure at the beginning of something like right. this whether it's going to work out to where you feel happy about it. But I have a more expansive view, I think, than some writers about. Uh, the idea of your book being made into a movie. The famous saying is that having your book made into a movie or into a TV show is like having your child kidnapped by a cult. Uh, well, I don't really actually feel that way about what's happened here or even close to it. Uh, I thought the job that uh, MTV and uh, my directors and writers and the actors did on adapting uh, the uh, Elfstones to uh, the larger screen uh, was terrific, um, mm. and uh, I, I thought that they captured the the actors captured the characters, uh, and, and they all inhabited them for the duration of the show in a way that was very satisfying. Mm. I thought the production values were astonishing. Having it filmed in New Zealand was something I never expected would ever happen. Mm. Having the kinds of sets we had for this thing. Right. Um, first time that they Janine and I stood under the tree, which is bigger than the room that you and I are seated in, it was just, you know, it was mind-blowing. Mm. Um, so seeing something like that done, it's pretty hard to be churlish enough to say, well, I didn't think it lived up to my expectations. <laughs> So I would never say that, and it was truly wonderful, and I'm looking forward to more of same in, in season two, and I, I think there's room for the show to grow as well. Have a moment when you're watching the first season that you were like, that's almost exactly what you envisioned or hoped, or was there a, even a scene that was just surprising to you? Well, there was some of there were more than one of those. I think uh, certainly the way they captured the look of the tree, the Elkris, uh was exactly the way that mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, and that was that was pretty wonderful. Um, uh, there's a scene there where uh, Alan and Will are in Paranor and retrieving the Codex, right. which was something created by the the showrunners writers. 
um, where I thought, wow, you know, where they had every, all the books flying back and, and everything uh, flying about and it was like poltergeist or something with all this stuff happening and, and uh, Alan is standing up there uh, with his hands pointed towards the yes. wall and all the runes are glowing red or on the back of his neck and, and I thought, that is just chilling. So that would be one example, but yeah, there were many, many scenes where the actors brought those characters to life and made those scenes feel special for me. Hmm. Do you have, have you seen much yet about how they're filming the second season or? Well, I haven't started filming yet. Oh, it hasn't uh, started filming No, yet. no, no. Oh, uh, it sorry. took a while to get to that point. And in the meantime, they're working on these uh, episode scripts for the, right. the various episodes. So that's, uh, I don't know what the schedule is going to be. I think because we're filming down under right. again, uh, they'll have to wait to the end of the year, beginning of next, to start filming. Right. Uh, because they have to have that wet, good weather in order to have outdoor scenes. Um, but I'm not in charge of that, thank goodness, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, and I don't know yet what their overall schedule is going to be. I'm just, at the moment, I'm just kind of sitting here reveling in the fact that there is going to be uh, right. season two and that maybe we'll have some more if uh, the ratings continue to be as, as high as they have been. Nice. Well, what what else is going on for you right now? Uh, you're you're always quite. What, busy. you want more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, as usual, I'm out writing a book, uh, right. so I'm working on the second of the uh, four book set um, mm -hmm. that will begin publishing next year about this same time, um, mm -hmm. and I'm doing some promotional work for a Sorcerer's Daughter. Um, I have uh, a book called Magic Kingdom for Sale, right. which is, has been in, under option from Warner Brothers Studios really? for about almost five years now. I think that's actually the first book I read of yours. Well, there you go. I was of that age, so it was just perfect uh, yeah. introduction. Well, it's, it's... I love that book. I know a lot of people have, so there's another, you know, I have to be careful with this one too. Uh, and it's under option over there, and Steve Carell has attached himself really? to that project and has signed on to play Ben Holiday and the executive That's produce. That's fantastic. I know, he's great. He's a great choice and uh, hmm. I've been worried because we've been floundering around about getting a good script hmm. and we've had several writers take a crack at it and they have not been able to, f to find their way. Hmm. But we have a current uh, writer right now who is very good and he has written a terrific uh, opening uh, screenplay I think and so uh, he's back working on touching it up, and I think if we get that at that point, that will proceed, and that will inquire a whole new level of involvement, I suppose. That's great. So I'm very excited about that happening, because like yourself, I happen to love, I'm very mm -hmm. close to that Magic Kingdom story, because of course it's in, on one level it's very autobiographical. Right. So I'm waiting for that to develop, and uh, then we've got a couple other hmm. projects that I can't talk about in the works, uh, so I have no end of... That's amazing. Of, uh, possible possibilities here and hoping that some of them will come to flourish. And are you allowed to say who the writer is who's working on that script? Uh, his name is Ron Lieber. Oh, okay. Yeah, or Lieberman. I can't remember now. I'm, we've been through this so long. <laughs> we haven't talked in a while. <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's Lieberman. But anyway, okay. uh, Rob has uh, written uh, a number of other movies. Um, I talked to him on the phone for about an hour the first time. Hmm. Very smart guy. Uh, he seems very dedicated to the project. Uh, and like I said, the telling uh, was when we saw that first uh, screenplay that he did that was so good. Hmm. And he got so many things right, right off the bat. Uh, and he's hewing to the storyline uh, to a great extent, uh, knowing that there will be some changes. Nevertheless, he's doing that. And that, to me, is very encouraging, obviously. So I think he'll do really, I think he's going to do really well with it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the time. It's a pleasure to meet you. You're very welcome. Happy to do this anytime.